What's going on, everybody? So today we're talking story instance. It's been a while since I've made an updated video on this, but I usually make these videos every couple of months or so because we get new characters, new banners, returning banners, etc., that allow me to go ahead and kind of involve a lot more of you. For example, we just got Northion back. So for those of you that were annoyed that some of the story instance, in fact, most of them included a Northion because of how powerful he is in that game mode. Well, you're in luck because now you actually have one. Hopefully, if you did summon for him. <laughs> With that said, I'm going to talk about the new assassin and how he fits super well into the story instance, of course, and the team comp, some of the characters and prototypes that I'm using. But... As I said, even though we're using Nordion, the assassins are kind of what make up the comp. And to be honest, all the prototypes, really the other prototypes, I should say, don't matter nearly as much, but you do want to try to pick up a Phantom Cloak. This absolutely changes the viability of your assassin comp in storyline. Before, if you don't have a Phantom Cloak, the assassins kind of just die or Northian will just die, which is the problem that you might have been seeing in the earlier iterations of this comp uh, if you've been trying to use it. Once you get like a level five, level six Phantom Cloak, you get a massive damage reduction. At six, it's 100%. This is pretty crucial for the story instance. Now, there has been a few different ways to earn the Phantom Cloak. There are some like random events that give you potential access to it. It was in a Twilight Lands. Um, at the current moment, I do not believe it is the Twilight Lands. So if you do have one, then that's fantastic. You can use this comp, try to upgrade it. If you do not, well, I take it back. Actually, it is currently the level 16 reward. So try to get to chapter 16 of Twilight Lands and uh, you'll have a good chance of earning that a Phantom Cloak for yourself. So if you do have it, this comp will work for you. If you do not, then you will try to push towards chapter 60 of Twilight Lands and then get it when you finish that. As for the comp itself, we're going to be jumping in and using our three assassins in Dominic, Rickert, and Samael. And then we're also using Northion and Fiona. Now, Fiona is a little bit of a question mark, or I guess you could say a flex spot, because depending on the comp, you might want to exchange Fiona for potentially another assassin like Kusanagi, or potentially running some other character in this back row. I've even used Jaina, I've used Cariolis, I've used Rebecca, I've used all sorts of different characters. It really depends on the stage. Some stages, the enemies jump in the back row and annihilate Fiona before she could really provide anything. And so just keep that in mind. All the other four, I've just found to be some of the strongest members of the people that you can use in this situation. And as such, we are using them. Samuel is a really important addition. With the Phantom Cloak, you have three characters that are basically impossible to kill for the first 10, 15 seconds of the battle. And then Samuel, because he takes the front row position and Dominic cannot be targeted, he's going to actually soak up a lot of the damage when that damage reduction wears off. And then he gets to revive himself. It's really, really nice. If you do have the exclusive 30, you get multiple revives, which is really, really nice. But I do not have that on him and it's not necessary. I don't even have him hyper evolved, which I will do eventually but he is super good in this comp. So I'll go ahead and show you on manual. Uh, but first, we have Cabal running as the assassin leader, so he gets some extra damage with Samael, Dominic, and Rickert. We're also running Chaos Chip because we will be getting some shields going on, and those shields are gonna give us a little bit of extra attack and Flashpoint to help us generate a little bit of additional shields with the Fiona here. Of course, we'll go over gear a little bit later on, let's dive into the battle here and just kind of showcase what this looks like on manual so you can see here we have all these skills on manual it's important to realize that dominic's ultimate kind of requires additional damage after it so if you do have an ultimate you kind of want to chain that with a dominic ultimate and northion's in particular well you kind of just want to keep chaining his ultimate together over and over again because you want to get him in the fight and because he's in the middle of the battle uh, or in the middle row, it's kind of hard sometimes to get him into the fight. But you can see here, we launched the mark on one of the characters, and then we immediately used, uh, well, I should say Dominic's ultimate into Rickard's ultimate to kind of pop the mark to do some extra damage. And you can see just the amount of damage that you can pump out with this team is immense. Samael's damage is quite good on an AoE. And then, of course, the single target potential from Rickard's and Dominic both is really, really strong. 
Northian might not seem like he's doing all that much here, but remember, he was literally only hitting one target the entire time, and that's kind of why you saw a little bit less numbers for him. If you put him in the front row, he does have a very good chance of just immediately dying, which is why we have him in that second row, and eventually, in some stages, he's going to really pop off and show you why he's still worthy of being in this comp. And he's not really super power corrupt for this specific game mode, um, as maybe some other ones. So... We're going to run through here. Uh, this is on manual, of course, so it's going to be a lot easier to push. But at some point, you do want to go on manual because it's going to be impossible to do it on auto. But I'll show you all here what this kind of looks like on auto. Remember, we're on chapter or yeah, chapter like 59, I believe, 59-4 or 3 is this battle. So a huge, huge um, stage for a lot of players most players are going to be kind of earlier on to the campaign and that's totally fine this will still work for you at that point so we'll put it on idle battle here which will kind of play on its own pace and just show you what this looks like in the auto battles very similar right we're going to get the same ultimates going the only difference is you're not going to be able to kind of chain the ultimates together how you want them and at certain points you may end up finding that you don't have enough DPS to get through some of the fights. But if you've ever pushed campaign before, you'll note that you'll be able to do like 50 or 60 battles. And then one of them you'll have to do on manual because it's a tricky stage. You can see there, Samuel did just die. And that's part of the reason why Samuel is so amazing for this comp. He is going to take the vast majority of the damage and then he's just going to die. But that's totally fine because he's just going to revive himself. Rickert also can revive himself, so any AoE damage that might kill off a Rickert, he can go ahead and revive from that, or I guess he's a full heal. And of course, Dominic can be targeted, any damage that he does take gets spread over time, so he's going to be quite tanky as well, which is really, really nice. You can see here we have Samael in the back line, kind of tanking up everything right now. And because of that Phantom Cloak, he just has an insane amount of tankiness. Right there is the Fiona ultimate, or the, I should say, the kind of passive effect when the characters use the movement abilities they're going to get immune so they get to soak up a ton of damage so fiona is really nice for this we also have a ton of shields going on but look at samael's damage right now it is really impressive and this is a situation where you'll notice northion in the back row not really doing a whole lot and that is easily replaced by a kusanagi as well if you find that your kusanagi is quite built out and of course you don't necessarily need the northion for certain comps in certain situations, you can go ahead and use Northion to wipe out a lot of the enemy, especially for certain spider stages where there's a lot of AoE to be had. You're going to find that Northion is exceptionally good. And you can see I haven't even reached the maximum potential of this comp. I'll show you the gear I got going on here because we could be here for a while. And even in situations where I might need a manual, I could probably push even further than that. So I honestly have no idea when I'll be stopping with progressing through the story uh, it'll probably be a few stages so let's dive into the gear a little bit and show you all what's necessary first off we have Rickert and Rickert's probably my worst geared assassin um honestly uh pretty straightforward we just got lots of crit damage on him as much as we possibly can get and then you want to stack as well a lot of attack you can do a little bit of crit rate on him but honestly it's not necessary because his sword souls off the other allies are going to give him additional crit so any attack percentage and crit damage should be your focus. Mine is exclusive 30. He does have a lot of the talents upgraded. And uh, this is his stats. Almost 100k attack on my Rickert. Next one up is going to be Dominic here. Dominic kind of has the opposite situation where you want to stack as much crit rate as you possibly can. Because his ultimate requires that you do critical damage to get that ultimate's damage ramped up. So you want him to have as much crit rate as possible. After crit rate, you want to stack crit damage and attack, which is going to give you a lot of extra value. As you can see here, 97% uh, 97k attack, also exclusive 30. Samael here, slightly different than both uh, Dominic and Rickert. You do want to stack crit rate up on him, which is going to really help out his damage. But you also would like to get a little bit of accuracy on him if you could because of his ability to kind of stun uh, on some of his abilities. But honestly, not necessarily. I guess you say necessary, not necessarily necessary <laughs> because of him just doing a lot of damage. So just get a lot of crit rate 
crit damage and attack on him and his stats will carry the fight for you just a solid amount of stats with him his is an exclusive 20 and you can see here with the exclusive 30 the maximum number of revivals is increased to two so this will help you out in the storyline if you do want to pick up that exclusive 30. I do want to talk about Kusanagi just for a second here because as I said you can replace Northion or you can replace Fiona depending on the stage with Kusanagi and she is going to be excellent as you can see I haven't fully gone all in on her um, because I wasn't necessarily super you know interested in building her out while also building out Samuel right um but you can see here for her if you are going to build her out she actually gets a lot of crit chance right she has 100 percent crit chance by default and crit damage or rather crit chance isn't converted into crit damage so for her you're going to want to focus on attack and crit damage and then extra crit rate is fine totally fine but not actually necessary and then last thing I want to mention for the assassins is every single one of these assassins needs to have the Marauder set. Every single one. Okay? It's super important that you do so because every single one has some sort of teleportation and that's going to make it so that you are getting the massive lifesteal and crit damage increase. Okay. After that, whoops, I backed out here. We also have two other characters to talk about. The first one is Northion. This guy, they don't want the Marauder set as well as the Assassins. And for him, crit rate, attack, crit damage, pretty standard stuff. You're gonna wanna build him like a standard damage dealer, get that max crit rate, get some crit damage and some attack on him. For mine, he's got exclusive 30 as well. And then lastly, we have the support, which is Fiona in this case. For her, mine build is actually pretty bad. Um, I do happen to have a light gap set. The light gap set is going to be really nice. Um, or I guess resident set if you can acquire it. Uh, after that, you just want to get some HP stacked on her and actually get a little good amount of accuracy so that you can go ahead and get the target increased for her nectar tight ability, which means that you want about 200 accuracy on her if you can get it. Exclusive 20 is pretty important exclusive 30 is going to help you out even more to survive uh, in some of those campaign battles so it's something to consider but as you can see my Fiona is pretty poorly geared I do have to re-gear her soon so that's going to be all the gear that you'll need and some things that you'll have to remember it's a pretty amazing comp definitely recommend you try it out of course especially for you early to mid game to even early late game players it, progressing in the story instance is way more important for me well, all my triple S's that I hyper evolve at this point have enough XP and soul rublet to kind of take it to 120. So yeah, pushing story instances is kind of just like a, a side goal because it's not actually progressing my account necessarily since I don't use elites, but anyone that's actually looking to level up their triple S's and doesn't have the resources, this is going to help you immensely. So hopefully this did help. If it did leave a like on the video, sub to the channel guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.